This presentation relates to electricity and magnetism. The diagram you're looking at is uh, that of a turbine, and, um, and it serves as a generator. Um, as a turbine, blades are spun by uh, hot gases or water. Um, a magnetic field is rotated. Um, or a, 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 wind, a magnetic field is, is rotated in the presence of uh, electrical uh, connections, or vice versa. Um, the electrical coils are rotated within the um, magnetic field formed by the stator. This is a water turbine. This is rather involved, but for those of you who have a little bit of, of higher mathematics, um, I, I, I guess it's really uh, something you can appreciate. Magnetic field generated by a steady current I, a constant flow of charges in which charges neither accumulating nor depleting at any point, is described by the bio Savara law, where the integral sums over the wire length where vector DL is the direction of the current, mu0 is the magnetic constant, R is the distance between the location of DL and the location at which the magnetic field is being calculate, calculated, and R is a unit vector perpendicular to DL and in the direction of R. So this you can see it involves the integral calculus, and um, but you can see uh, even without knowing that, that the magnetic field decreases as a square law. The four pi suggest that uh, the magnetic field is roughly spherical. Vampire's law, it relates to a magnetic field within a current loop. Um, this relates current I to the B field, where the integral is over any arbitrary loop, and I enclosed is the current enclosed by that loop. Vampire's law is always valid for steady currents, can be used to calculate the B field in a certain highly symmetrical situation, such as an infinite wire and infinite solenoid. In a modified form that accounts for time varying electric fields. Ampere's law is one of four Maxwell's equations that describe electricity and magnetism. Remarkable achievements. Here's a diagram of Ampere's law. You can see that if I have a magnetic field, um, I can cause uh, an electric current. And if I have an electric current, I can cause a uh, magnetic field. And here's the right-hand rule, which shows the direction of um, the uh, current uh, and uh, the associated magnetic field that's created. It's called the right-hand rule. And I think there is a mention of this in the other presentation on this subject, magnetic fields and forces. You can use Ampere's law to make an electromagnet. Just with DC, it doesn't have to be a varying current. Um, you can run a DC current through a coil of wires wrapped around the nail and you will create a magnet. Now, this is harder to do with an aluminum <laughs> nail. I would suggest you one that's made of steel. The second fundamental law associated with electricity and magnetism is Faraday's law of induction. Uh, Faraday's law of induction um, makes use of the magnetic flux to a surface. Um, and so this is, this is the top equation is the equation for the flux, which of course is essentially reduces to B times A in most of the discussions in this module. But if you have a complex spherical kind of surface or any shape in three dimensions actually, this equation would allow you to get the equivalent uh, amount of flux for that situation. Um, Faraday's law of in induction says that the work, um, E done per unit charge moving a test charge around the closed curve, uh, is given by um, this E, and by the way, those two E's are not the same, uh, but they are the same. Um, they're not the same in, the, in this presentation, but they are the same in mathematics. So they really represent an EMF, electromotive force, and that's equal to dP dt, where the rate of change in flux uh, per unit time 
produces a voltage. Okay. And you'll notice that that, that the only constant that would be in this is N for the number of coils. So it would be the EMF for voltage is equal to N D V D. You can use Faraday's law to make a generator. Here you can see that as I rotate this coil, the area rotates, and um, hence the uh, cosine term. Um, you can look back on um, your, your review or your introduction to trigonometry, and you can see that as, it, as, the, um, as the coil rotates, the area becomes, when the, the, when the area is in line with the, uh, with the magnetic field, you, you get no uh, EMF, and when it's when it's uh, perpendicular to it, in other words, when you have the maximum number of bead lines through the area, uh, then uh, you get a maximum EMF. So um, Ampere's law is often used to create the bead field using electromagnets. So even though we've shown uh, fixed permanent magnets here. In, in most generators, they're actually electromagnets. <laughs>